FAQ number 29, is there a rapture in Revelation chapter 14, verses 14 through 20? It's a good question. Let's read here in our King James Bibles. Revelation 14, verse 14, it says, And I looked, and behold, a white cloud, and upon the cloud one sat like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, Thrust in thy sickle, and reap, for the time is come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. And he that sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. And another angel came out of the temple, which is in heaven, he also having a sharp sickle, and another came, angel came out from the altar, which had power over fire, and cried with a loud cry to him that had the sharp uh, sickle, saying, Thrust in thy sharp sickle, and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, for her grapes are fully ripe. And the angel thrust in his sickle into the earth, and gathered the vine of the, wine, of the earth, and cast it into the great winepress of the wrath of God. And the winepress was trodden without the city, and blood came out of the winepress, even unto the horse bridles by the space of a thousand and six hundred furlongs. Okay, so you have the first part there, verses 14 down through um, 16, 14 through 16, you have the first part of it. You know, one sitting on the cloud like unto the Son of Man, you know, Jesus sitting up there and he goes and gathers them, you know, and, um, and the earth is reaped. Okay, then you have verses 18 through 19, he goes and, and an angel this time reaps and they're cast into the wine press of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. So a lot of people say, well, you know, the time of Jacob's trouble is going to basically be, you know, split into two sections and they'll say the wrath begins halfway through. Well, I don't believe that way, at least not totally. I do believe that the wrath is there the whole way through the thing. I mean, unleashing the Antichrist on the earth is, is you know, definitely God's judgment and his wrath that, you know, it's there. You take the mark of the beast, you get the wrath of God. When does the mark of the beast show up? It shows up with the Antichrist. So, you know, to say that there is no wrath in the first part of it, only halfway through, no, I don't believe that. I don't believe that. I mean, Jesus Christ opening the, the seals, you know, and, and there's, you know, the Antichrist followed by war and, you know, famine, death and hell, you know, after that, uh, that's wrath. Don't tell me it's not. So, but I do believe that the wrath is going to get much worse in the last half. I believe that the first three and a half years of the time of Jacob's trouble is going to be war. It's going to be worldwide worship of the Antichrist. It's going to be a technological nightmare. Everybody's chipped and things and buying things with RFID, you know, chips and, and uh, uh, QR codes and all that ridiculous nonsense and Facebook hooked up to your cell phone and all the technology that's available right now. You know, that's all going to be there and it's going to last for three and a half years. And then I believe it midway into that, I think that the technology is going to actually break down and the whole computer system is going to fall apart. There could be a solar flare that knocks out all, fries all the electricity or, or whatever. But I think the last three and a half years is going to be like you see Hollywood, you know, trying to show this, you know, post-apocalyptic world uh, where everything's just broken down and people are wondering about like nomads and, you know, cannibalism and, and violence and everything else. I think that that's what the last three and a half years is going to be like. And it's just going to be a very bad time. So before that time comes there, that midway point, it looks like somebody's being caught up to heaven. Let me show you another thing here. Revelation chapter 7. And again, rem remember, the books of Revelation are not chronological. Okay. There's a telling and then a retelling and then a retelling and then a retelling. Over and over again, this happens. Revelation chapter 6 is actually an overview of the whole time of Jacob's trouble from beginning to end. Jesus Christ shows up at the end of it. And that lines up, if you, if you read it, if you study it, it lines up with Revelation chapter 19. The end of chapter 6, Revelation chapter 19, when Jesus Christ comes back with his saints. Lines up. It doesn't, it's, it's not that Jesus comes back at Revelation 6, goes back up to heaven, then waits for another, you know, what is that, uh, 13 chapters, and then it comes down to Revelation 19. No, it doesn't work that way. A lot of people get confused about that. The book of Revelation is not chronological. Keep that in mind. But uh, you have Revelation chapter 7, verses 1 down through 8. You have the different 
tribes, 12,000 from each of the 12 tribes described. Verse 9, After this I beheld and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands, and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne, and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne and about uh, the elders and the four beasts, and fell before their, the throne on their faces, and worshipped God, saying, Amen, blessing, and glory, and wisdom, and thanksgiving, and honor, and power, and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes, and whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation. Great tribulation, not the great tribulation. Remember again, Great Tribulation is not a title, it's a description of this time of Jacob's trouble. Which time of Jacob's trouble is found in Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 7. But let's continue, it says, And have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. That's how you know that these are not Christians. These are not Gentile Christians that you see here. We do not wash our robes and make them uh, white in the blood of the Lamb. We are washed. Okay? Your robe that you get, your, your you know, uh, fine linen that you have as a Christian is based on your righteousness and service to the Lord. But you aren't washing your robe in the blood of the Lamb. We are washed in the blood of the Lamb. Okay, so these are not Christians that you're seeing here in Revelation chapter 7. I'll show you another one. Uh, Revelation chapter 15, verses 1 and 2 here. And I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them is filled up the wrath of God. So you see that coming right after Revelation chapter 14 there. Verse 2, And I saw as it were a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast, and over his image, and over his mark, and over the number of his name, stand on the sea of glass, having the harps of God. So there's somebody there, a group there, that's up there, that had gone through part of that time of Jacob's trouble. And now they're up there. So is there some kind of a rapture at the midway point of time of Jacob's trouble saints? It looks like that, yes. It definitely looks like that. And let me show you a little booklet here that I read years ago. Uh, this is put out by Dr. Peter S. Ruckman. It's called The Two Raptures. And here you have church age saints. Here you have tribulation saints, which again, you know, a lot of people call it by that name, but that's not actually correct. But I just, you know... I love Dr. Ruckman's ministry, but some of the stuff is just like, come on, Dr. Ruckman. I mean, here you got the church age saint. He's clean shaven, but the tribulation saint, you know, he's looks like me. He's got a beard, you know. You know, to be a good a good Christian nowadays, you have to be a clean shaven Baptist, you know. <laughs> like, come on, man, you know. And of course, the church age saint goes up from a church building, big old church building with the phallic steeple on top, and uh, the tribulation saint here, he's got a gold hexagram. Yeah, and I understand, you know, Dr. Ruckman, you know, he if I if you talk to him, he'd know a lot of this stuff. He's not ignorant of this stuff, but you know, it's just this drawing things because that's what people would see it as and that's how people would understand it. I don't agree with Dr. Ruckman and everything. He's still, you know, in my opinion, the best Bible teacher out there. Uh, he knows the book very well in spite of some of the little issues that he has here and there, but but anyhow, here he has 1 Thessalonians 4, 15 through 18. Very true. Talking about the rapture, particularly verses 16 and 17 there. But uh, Matthew chapter 24, verse 31. Now, just go there in your Bible, Matthew 24, verse 31. I'm trying to keep these things under 15 minutes. Because I've been a bad boy, you know, with YouTube. You know, whatever. Matthew 24, verse 31, And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Okay, so there is something there. Now, some people, the reason I said about verse 31 there, I was thinking of another verse. The other verse would be down there in verse 40, Then shall two be in the field, the one shall be taken and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill, the one shall be taken and the other left. People try to make that into the rapture. It's not the rapture. Say, so how do you know that? Turn over to Luke 17. Luke chapter 17. 
verse 35. Two women shall be grinding together, the one shall be taken and the other left. Two men shall be in the field, the one shall be taken and the, and, uh, the other left. Verse 37, And they answered and said unto him, Where, Lord? They're taken, you know. Verses uh, 35 and 36, they're taken. They say, Where, Lord? And he said unto them, Wheresoever the body is, wheresoever the body is, thither will the eagles be gathered together. So I believe that this reference in Matthew 24, Luke 17, Mark 13, I believe it's there too, um, in the Gospels, you have a reference to these people being taken, and they're actually taken to out there. They're running away from the Antichrist army. They're taken out there to that, the plains of Megiddo, I think it's called, you know, there, and, and where the valley of, or the uh, battle of Armageddon is going to take place. It's not really much of a battle either, because, you know, the Lord Jesus Christ just, you know, whips the Antichrist and the false prophet, casts them in the lake of fire, and then just turns around and just wipes out their 200 million man army by himself. You know, we just get to sit there and watch the thing as his saints behind him on horseback. Which, of course, you know, if you believe in a post-trib rapture, you know, it's kind of weird. How do we get up there on horseback, you know? But, uh, you know, I guess we get raptured up, get on horseback, and come right back down again if you're uh, post-time of Jacob's trouble. Stupid system. But, you know, is there a catching away, a rapture uh, during the time of Jacob's trouble? Yeah, I do believe that there is. I, I, I do believe in that. Um, what are all the details? How does that whole thing work out? Brethren, I'm going to be very honest with you. There's a lot of stuff that goes on in the time of Jacob's trouble. I just, I, I've been over it and I hear teaching on it and stuff. And it's like, yeah, but you know, I, I don't quite get it. <laughs> um, you know, as a, as a Bible teacher, my limited, or my, my understanding of the Bible is, is not perfect especially when it's not dealing with the dispensation that I'm in. Uh, there's some stuff out into the future and stuff that goes on in the Millennial Kingdom and, and near the end of the time of Jacob's trouble. I've read it and read it and read it and I read the books about it and everything else and it's just like it just doesn't quite sink in. you know. So um, can I explain all the details of this, of this mid-time of Jacob's trouble catching away and, and how the saints and how the thing's going to work out and whatever else? No, I can't you know, quite work all that stuff out. And people say, well, how do you know it's not the body of Christ that goes up at that point in time? Well, because, uh, first of all, they're washing their robes in the blood of the Lamb. You know, the saints that are up there, they've washed their robes in the blood of the Lamb. That's not us. Um, secondly, the reason I know it's not the body of Christ is because there's no mention of the dead in Christ rising first and then we which are alive and remain going up. It's just a general gathering. He, he gathers his elect. You know, there, according to Matthew chapter 24, verse 31. And elect is just like the word saint. Saint can be used for saved people in the Old Testament, saved people in the church age, saved people in the time of Jacob's trouble, saved people in the millennial kingdom. It's a generic term. Elect is the same thing. Okay? Elect, the elect can be used in the context of Matthew chapter 24. I believe it's talking about the Jewish people, but it's also used for the body of Christ. So, you know, it's just a, a generic term. So you can't take verses that talk about the elect being members of the body of Christ and then say, well, see, since it means elect here in the Pauline epistles, then we can also mean it's the same thing over here in Matthew chapter 24. No, because it's just it's a generic term. It can be used all throughout the Bible, just like saints. So do I believe in a rapture in Revelation chapter 14? Yes, I do. It's not the rapture of the body of Christ, though. So get that thing straight. But uh, very good question. Thank you for asking that.